not a thousand percent sure where I need to start. Do I need to start with how after our show last night, I get back on social media because I have a couple hundred notifications of Iowa fans or people who either are pretending or perceiving themselves to be Iowa fans? Or should I start off with the governor of the state of Louisiana, Jeff Landry, not only using his staff to find out the correct answers about what happened with LSU women's basketball and what they've done all year with the or before the national anthem that they go in at the 12-minute mark no matter what. They've done that for the last three years under Kim Mulkey. And or should I start with the media? Because last week, which something that we and you and I have not talked about. The hit piece came out, or alleged hit piece came out of Kim Mulkey from Kent Babb of the Washington Post, which you and I have not discussed. And last week, they were labeling Kim Mulkey, and they used a name for her that went something like this. They called her Maga Mulkey. But now, this week, when her team, for whatever reason, a right-leaning political sports figure who has absolutely no idea what he's doing, by the way, has had multiple retractions, covers Iowa for a living, and has still had to have multiple retractions because his sourcing is beyond bad. He posted, LSU's not out there. And then meanwhile, last year in the national title game, Iowa was not out for the national anthem. Isn't that very interesting? Oh, and now they're painting Kim Mulkey that she is a bigot. And that she does not love the country. Which one is it? The truth is we'll get to all three. We got football we need to talk about. Joe Sloan met with the media here today. I am about fed up and exhausted with women's basketball. A little of me, unfortunately, is a, a, a relieved that it's over because of all the chaos that has happened. And listen... I know that some of you don't come here to listen to politics. I don't like, I'm not, I'm not your political guy. I, and here's the truth. I don't give two Rudy Poos what you believe. If you believe in the spaghetti swamp monster as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't matter to me because in this country, under the First Amendment, which a lot of our family members fought to uphold, which I gave a decade of my life trying to help and uphold, you can't tell me what to do or what to say. And some of you get offended by that. Oh, well. Go go do something else. I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it's just very exhausting. Not a lot of people were actually talking about the game because everybody and their mama started off uh, from a national media perspective, which, by the way, which we should be celebrating, that it was the highest-rated women's basketball game from a TV viewing standpoint ever. Last night's LSU-Iowa game was the highest-viewed women's basketball game ever. You didn't hear what I... Make sure you're listening to what I just said. I didn't say women's college basketball. I said women's basketball game ever. So, I'll start off my opening monologue with this. Normally, I get to some of your comments, but right now, I'm going to start off with an opening monologue. I'm going to start with this in no specific order, but I deem it to be worthy here tonight. Let me start off with the governor of the state of Louisiana, Jeff Landry. Jeff, you've constantly ignored, in my opinion, you've constantly ignored multiple people inside your staff, multiple people inside your cabinet. And if you are going to make an issue and say that players need scholarship reductions, and let me add, in case you did, in case you missed it, the governor of the state of Louisiana, Jeff Landry, today said that players who don't go out and stand for the anthem need or it needs to be discussed that they need their scholarship pulled. Um, that's essentially what he was saying when he said that his mother was a high school basketball coach and we need to respect the anthem. Well, the problem, Mr. Governor, is 
Nobody was disrespecting the anthem. You get you paid your respects to Kim Mulkey. Kim Mulkey goes into the locker room to, to finish getting ready for a basketball game at the 12-minute mark. She's done that for the last three years. You have multiple people inside your cabinet that could have figured that out for you. Many boosters that gave money to your campaign that also give massive amounts of money to LSU that could have told you that, that do NIL deals with LSU. By the way, you should have taken the win and helping letting you be the governor when a new arena was going to get passed. But you didn't. You have constantly done the opposite of what your staff has told you to do. If you want to ask me how I know, oh, you don't want to go down that route, I promise you. The bottom line is when you start threatening college players' scholarships, for something that they have absolutely no control over. What you should have done is gone after Kim Mulkey because it's her decision to go in the locker room. But you're labeling it from on 18 to 21-year-olds that have absolutely no say-so if they're going to be out there for the anthem or not. Now, here is my belief, and I will always have this belief, and if you don't believe, if you don't agree with me, I am sorry. Every time the national anthem is played and I am present, I will stand. If you don't believe that there are times, even in my own house, that I will stand, you can ask my lovely wife, Megan. I think that there's something to be said about what people have done to defend a free country in free democracy. And here's the truth. It was never free. It was given in blood. I agree it's a hot-button political topic, but why are we constantly, and it's not, it's not the players. The players have nothing to do with this, nothing. They didn't disrespect anything. It's a joke. I hope that he does great in other areas, but the man that threw out the first pitch who did, when it didn't go well at LSU a while back might need to stay out of this one. Because you, when, this is what happens, and this is what I tell you. Stay with me. Remember uh, about a month ago when I came on this show and bitched and moaned and complained about what was happening with college football when Tennessee sued the NCAA? Now you see statements today from guys like Jeff Landry about pulling scholarships for a Kim Mulkey decision. That is the people that you are going to to try to make college athletics better by changing and regulating NIL in the transfer portal. Understand that. Legislators have no idea what they are doing when it comes to college athletics. Nothing. They are as, and how do I, what word do I want to use here? As oblivious. I don't care if you vote for the man. I don't care if you don't vote for the man. I don't care if you love him. I don't care if you hate him. I don't care if you agree with his political views or disagree with his political views. When it comes to something that starts getting into sports, which by the way, Ironically enough, the hit piece that came out from the Washington Post was a, actually not more damaging to Kim Mulkey than what Jeff Landry had to say about his own state and his own flagship school and university. It's not the only one that needs a talking to. And by the way, Iowa fans, I'm going to get to you. Secondly is the media. Last week I came on the show, actually a week ago today, I came on the show and said, guys, it's being very difficult for me to cover women's basketball, even if I enjoy it. Guys, last night's game, even in a loss, even in a loss, last night's game, and you're, we're fans of LSU, even in last night's loss, that game was awesome. Caitlin Clark, tip of your cat tour. She was the best player on the court last night. 
She might be the best player in college basketball. I, I don't know. Women's college basketball. You get what I mean? It's very tough for me. Very tough for me to look at the media and everything that they have twisted over the last two weeks about our school. And I will tell you, Kim Mulkey, I don't want to say blame. Kim Mulkey has some, I don't know what the right word is. She brought these eyes on LSU weeks ago when she said what she said, even though she didn't say anything wrong. But when she said when LSU played South Carolina, I wish old girl would do that to Angel Reese. Ever since then, it's been a it's been a whirlwind on LSU, and maybe it's just me. I don't see a lot of media doing it outside of Chester Boucher, but not a lot of media around here are defending LSU and what's actually right here. Now, I don't listen to the shows. I don't watch them, so maybe they are. I do not know. But here's what I do know. What I do know is this. Everything that Kim Mulkey said about the media – over the last two weeks, is literally playing out in front of your eyes. Guys, there's a reason why someone like myself, who, by the way, took a massive leap of faith to do this full-time. Massive leap of faith. 900 episodes to do this full-time. You come and you rely on us and believe in us more than you believe traditional media right now because, quite honestly, they suck. And they make everything political. But now the political side of things is completely washed media. And let me tell you why. Guys, I could come out here right now and go full political. And you know what would happen? I will tell you what would happen because I have multiple advertisers that pay per the view. I would make a crap load of money in doing that. A crap load of money of doing what the other media part does. They have quotas that they got to meet. They will never tell you it's true. They'll never tell you that, oh, this is not what we're doing. We're doing investigative, real journalism. You're not doing real journalism. You've not done real journalism. The Kent Bad piece from the Washington Post, what are we, what was, what was that even about? Oh, she doesn't talk to her dad. Her dad didn't walk her down the aisle talking about Kim Mulkey. Who gives the outright flying fuck about that? It, it is a personal matter that Kim Mulkey should not have to defend. Oh, Brittany Griner had blue hair or some player had blue hair at Baylor. Newsflash, sweetheart. You're at a Christian school. You can't go to a private institution and do whatever in the hell you please and think it's going to be okay. Sorry that that's the rules. Grow up, Peter Pan. We coddle 18 to 21-year-olds too much, and the media helps in doing it. She couldn't have blue hair. Kim, they try to label her as some, you know, I'm not even going to say the word. Meanwhile, what they didn't write in the story was is that in 2017, when her own son, Kramer Robertson, bleached his hair blonde, she had something to say about it. It's exhausting. I am thoroughly exhausted. It's not fair to you as a fan. It's not fair to people who just want to come in here and talk about sports. It's not fair to anybody. Let me finish with this before we get to the comments. we got to get to a commercial break, and the Carter joins us in 15 minutes. I don't know if these people are Iowa fans or not. Let me tell you that something that isn't political, even though it gets politicized way too often. Being racist is not political. You have multiple Iowa fans yesterday on social medias saying things about Angel Reese and others 
guys, it's beyond words that I can say some of the things that they said, some of the things that they did. It's embarrassing to the University of Iowa. It's embarrassing to the fan base for not coming to the aid of any player. Ever. When it comes to them using racial slurs, them using things about Angel Reese that are outright stupid. I agree with one thing. Angel saying being sexualized, well, you're on the cover of, of a magazine in a bikini. That's not even what the context that she's talking about. Last night in the post game, Angel Reese came out and said, you know, there's things, there's racism that I see that I'm tagged in that I can't respond to. I get sexualized. I get DM'd by lonely, fat, horny dudes. And she's got to sit there and take it because if she comes out and says something, she looks like and she's painted as the villain. AI generated pictures of her all across the place. But yet we want to paint her in a negative light. To the fan base of Iowa, you should be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed. It doesn't matter. The basketball game doesn't fucking matter anymore. What you should have done is lay everything down. We all join arms in unison and defend somebody that can't defend themselves. She's 21 years old. She's going to make bad decisions. I made very bad decisions when I was 21. I know for a fact that you did watching this right now. I have never in 906 episodes been this pissed off ever. F unfollow us. Don't talk to us. Call me whatever you want to call me. But what you do not do is come on any social media play. Say it to me. If you want to say something like that to Angel Reese, come and find me. DM me. I'll meet up with you. It's a joke. You have guys that are five foot seven, drive jacked up trucks to overcompensate for their small penis. Mega pause. But I am fed up. We're 20 minutes into the show. We hadn't said one thing about sport. That part, I promise you, pisses me off more than anything. Because I got to spend all of my goddamn time figuring out how we start the show five hours ago. Start show prep. Oh, I got to talk about this shit. You notice how it's never the athletes being racist? It's everybody else around them. All right. <sighs> I've never in my God forsaken life. Hey man, I'm a DM away. As my grand, my grandfather would say, God bless his soul in the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit. I double dog dare you. <laughs> Please dear Lord. And you better pack a lunch. All right. Good buddy Tim Graves says media always make this black. It makes it a black and white issue. Always, and you know what's you know what's crazy, man. Tim, to me, sports has always been that way in a lot of ways. Look, and I'll just give an example. 
but in a, in a competitive nature. Larry versus Mike. You have movies that were created around it. You have Rocky versus Apollo Creed. They made billions off of that. Sport has always made things, and when it's racially divided, it sells. They know that. There's not, there's not a, they're not going a, a away from the playbook here. But for once, can we talk about the game? Guys, last night, I know you don't like me saying this. Last night, Caitlin Clark went insane. Guys, she's pulling up from the logo and draining threes. Meanwhile, LSU baseball was getting beat. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Uh, Jerry says, uh, God, Blake, bro blood pressure high. My blood pressure is, we can test it right here. Hold on. Blood pressure. We'll test it right here. I'll measure it right here on the, on the smartwatch. Lance says, hell yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, and Blake Rufino, you're saying everything a 77-year-old grandmother has to say with no platform on which to say it. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You're welcome. It is my blood pressure is 125 over 81. Is that good? Guys, tell me in the chat. Is 125 over 81 a good blood pressure reading? John Sibley Butler says, Caitlin is the best, period. I, I, I think that she is one of, if not the best. I think you can make the argument because of what she does. Because of what she does. You know what? We're eight minutes away from... Um, we're eight minutes away from Carter Bryant joining us. So let me do this. We're going to get to the commercial break when he joins. That way we can get to some stuff because we do th have things that we need to get into here. Uh, we're going to talk some Joe Sloan with him, but I need to talk baseball here for just a minute. Panic button for LSU baseball. Let's touch on that. And then at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Ask Blake. Listen, Jay Johnson is on his radio show right now. And last night, the LSU Tigers, which we did not talk in depth, we watched the game together in the episode last night when they got beat 12 to 7 by Southern. The question that I've been asked, and I think the question that you have been asking is, are we going to hit the panic button on April the 2nd on LSU baseball? I will tell you I am not. I do think that the two and seven record in conference needs to be put in a little bit of context. Let's put it in context here tonight. Um Mississippi State, I can't really defend you. I think what happened in the first weekend against Mississippi State, you were just overwhelmed by the moment. The crowd, the atmosphere, the energy that Mississippi State played with, you just didn't have it in you. Now, you all, you got away with one on Saturday, but Friday and Sunday, you were not able to put anything or enough together to win you that series. Guys, the reason we need to put this in context and why I have not hit the panic button yet is mainly due to the simple nature that you are legitimately a ball hitting the plate away from Alex Malazzo getting the ball on a strikeout from Nate Ackenhausen, throwing it to first, out number three, and you being in winning the series against Florida. The narrative would have been, all right, look, we lost – with a young team, we lost both series on the road. Even though we we got swept against Arkansas, we beat Florida at home. Can we now come in here and beat Vandy? Is just being on the road an issue for us? But you didn't. And you were on it. Like we've said, and the theme of this year is that the moment is too big for this team. You go into Arkansas, which we did multiple post games, two post games uh, uh, when we played Arkansas. We didn't talk about game three. But I look at that series and like, man, you're legitimately, you're right there. You're not as far off as we think that we are. I mean, some things go your way and some guys get a base hit or you make a play here. That series is completely different. You, there would, could have been a strong likelihood that you walk out of that series with two wins. Now, last Wednesday, I told you it was just of my opinion that there was no way that I saw LSU winning that series. I thought they'd take one. 
I thought it would be Friday with Luke Holman, and they should have took that one. They should have took the one on Sunday or on Saturday, excuse me. They were unable to do that. So where do we go from here? You're two and seven in the league. And Jay Johnson tonight had a very interesting quote about legitimately that, look, we are not, cell phones are not allowed in the locker room. They're not allowed on the field. We got some things that we got to, we got to change. Guys, Jay is sending massive amounts of messages to his team. Tons of messages to his team that, look, it's just not good enough right now. And if you can't get with the program, you will not be here. And let me say, tell you something about Jay Johnson. Because I've already started to hear the whispers about Jay. Oh, man, this is Ed Orsron all over again. It's not going to happen. He will let people walk and bring in new people in here that are better and will destroy the transfer portal. That man is not going to be in a situation. Jay's going to be here for a long time. He is. Now, he's got a lot he's got to work with. They missed on some guys. They, they legitimately, in recruiting, missed on some dudes. And that is unfortunate. And LSU is not, you know, a place where you are allowed to have a year to build. Not baseball-wise, you're not. And it's unfortunate because I do think you have a lot of talent. I do think that you have some guys turning the corner. I think you got guys like guys. Bear Jones on Sunday and Saturday had two hits, two massive base hits in both games. So I think three or four total hits where, look, when the game was on the line, Bear Jones delivered. You're just not able to put it together. Let me talk about last night. LSU lost 12-7 to to Southern. Guys, don't tell me midweeks don't matter because midweeks can matter. When you got when you get swept and you lose to Southern, it's a big deal. When you lose four straight, it's a big deal. There's no time in the season too early or too late for you to be swept. It, it guys, it just can't happen. And then for you to lose that midweek to a team that has not beat you at home since 2005 is even more embarrassing. And look, Southern's a really good baseball team. They're going to probably win the swag. Actually, I pretty much would guarantee almost that they would win the SWAC barring injury. They came to play. And here's the thing. I've been waiting. I've been holding on to this thought because I didn't want it to be like, oh, shit, and, and people just take it out of context. You are getting everybody's best shot if you're LSU baseball. And you're not, you're uh, either you number one, don't have the understanding or the capability or maturity to understand the moment. And number two, you're just not ready for it. There's got to be a level of fuck you when you step either on that field, the diamond, the court, no matter what it is. You know why I love Angel Reese? Can I tell you why I love Angel Reese? Because she's a thousand percent right on w one massive thing that she says. The other day that Angel Reese said, listen, me and Caitlin Clark love each other. Whether you guys believe it, no matter how you twist it in the media, we actually pretty much like each other. We love each other. I, I like Caitlin a lot. When I go over that line on the court, mama mentality. And you're going to have to start getting that. Because last night, you came out flat. You came out uninterested. You came out saying, look, we're LSU. We can beat Southern in the midweek. And they came in here and clapped your cheeks. What you're doing on the mound, you're, you, I mean, look, there are guys giving maximum effort, and I appreciate that as a fan that they're giving maximum effort. The bottom line is, is that you're not playing good enough right now, and if you don't change things around, specifically this weekend versus Vandy, you're in trouble. Guys, this is a must-win weekend. I don't care how many week more weekends you got. You need to start changing the ship right now. You can say, oh, Blake, it's too early in the year. The f bull, bull, it's too early in the year. I don't want to hear that garbage. It's never too early in the year to, be, to get swept. 
and then lose in midweek. It, it, it just isn't. Jay's pretty pissed, and I can understand why. All right. Let's get to our good buddy, Carter, the power, Brian. Joe Sloan met with the media today. Spring football continues. We'll touch on that. I'm sure we'll talk about women's basketball. we got lots of other things that we need to talk about. It's my favorite segment of the week, always when he joins. Carter, the power, Brian. Let's talk about our good friends over at betonline.ag. Our good friends over at our good friend over at LPT Realty, Tyler Alexander, and our good friends over at J and J Exterminating. The man, the myth, the legend. You know him. Joins us. Next. Ben Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live, in game betting, props, and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag, betonline.ag. He will sell your house and find you a new. Well, Tyler's the man, he's here for you. If you want to buy or sell, well, it's not too late. Dial 955-0008. Just call 955-0008. Y'all call Tyler, he'll shoot you straight. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. No, not mud bugs. Unwanted bugs like these. The ones you don't want crawling in your home or business. Trust the shield from J&J Exterminating. We've been protecting Louisiana homes for over 50 years, earning the trust of our clients because we deliver what we promise. Protect your home from pests. Get the shield from J&J Exterminating. J&J Exterminating. Yeah. Carter, the power, Bryant joins us every Monday, but it's Tuesday because LSU and Iowa played um, yesterday. Good evening, good sir. How are you? Blake, uh, I'm going to be honest. Yesterday was one of the weirdest days I've ever had on YouTube. And okay, honestly, why is that? I, well, I appreciate you hopping on uh, my post game show after uh, the game. Obviously, you know, I respect your, your opinion uh, as much as anyone. But thank you. I even if you factor in all the complicated stories that have happened at LSU, this is definitely the more complex one. And on top of that, I felt like the ending of this game was more complex than the actual championship game last year with all the different tenants. Oh, uh, heavens, yes. And then you get today that the, the ratings were three million more people on a freaking Monday night with so much different crap going on. And last year, they drew a 9 million person rating, but that was on ABC at 2.30 with not shit else going on in the world. It is crazy what Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and Kim Mulkey and all the stars did yesterday. So absolutely crazy, and I'm ready to talk about all of it. All right, do you want to start off with this Kim Mulkey basketball stuff, or you want to go to football and then Kim Mulkey? In there? I guess yeah, we should probably go on it since we're already uh, here. Yeah, yeah, you choose. Go on ahead. Okay, uh, Carter, I, I I just don't understand. I, I don't understand it all. You know, like Jeff Landry coming out today, the governor of Louisiana saying what he said. I, I, like, what what do we like? I feel like the meteor's coming. I, I feel yeah, like the, I, the, the meteor's got to be coming, right? Like, I mean, we're we're all doomed. Yeah. So this is crazy to me, uh, Blake. I, I worked on in D.C., and a lot of my friends when I lived in D.C. 
were like PR political professionals that worked for governors and senators and stuff like that in D.C. And, you know, I, I, I wasn't like super close with them, but like when I lived there, we go out, eat dinner, play soccer, what, whatever. And it is amazing how many of them were like shocked uh, at the what, what Jeff Landry did. this. Oh, dude, you like, know, my, you know, my background. OK, yeah, of course. Yeah, there is right. no one that you were the least over, shocked over over a decade. Can I can I just tell you, I, I have never been more shocked in my life that a sitting governor would say something like that. How and, and, and here's the thing, Carter, how dumb can you be? They, it, don't, it, they didn't make that decision. Yeah, I, I, I will say and I'm, I'm not a politics guy, but me either. I, like, like I said, I, I I know people that are. I I I I've never seen a more miscalculated move than that. Like <laughs> number more one, more dude, miscalculated the move he made today, or him throwing out the first pitch the way that he did. <laughs> I don't know e- either. Either one. I and look, I, I I'm not smart enough to be a governor. Okay, but all to. It, let me let me just say this: If you were an LSU player, and your governor, your elected official, came out the day after you lost one of the most gut wrenching losses uh, you can remember, maybe in program history, at least since one nine twelve, uh, it it felt like that, right? Since right. because because of how big it was, how many people were watching, had a had a number like a national championship game, and if I was a player and I saw an elected official who goes to all the LSU teams and smiles, throws first pitches and acts cool with all of them. And I woke up and I saw that the elected official with the only power five state school crapped all over my team. Oh, I would be furious. Absolutely furious. If, if I was in Jeff Landry's camp, all I would have said was, Hey, let's call Kim Mulkey and see if we can have the players out for the anthem. Okay. But to publicly call them out like that very is, bad calculated move. And and it it's hurtful. It is hurtful, right? That someone that powerful did that. And that's not me being political, right or left or whatever. That that was just really poor taste. And it was like a word salad thing about his mother coaching back then and and then throwing Kim Mulkey in there, it didn't really make sense. And I'm like, oh, he actually is doing uh, this. And that's the thing. It's okay if a talking head. It's okay if you have a hot take or me have a hot take. Because that's we're, we're bloggers. We're, we're social media talking heads. You're an elected official. You don't you don't do that. That <laughs> you really really. Well, it'd be one thing, Carter, if the normal fan or or somebody made a mistake, but you have people in your cabinet for that. That's right. what people get hired for. And if right. someone did allowed him to tweet that out, they need to be fired. Okay. And so yeah. uh, even with him and look, I, I feel icky having to come on here and talk sports and politics, but here we yeah. are. And I will tell you, Carter, can I tell you the one thing that is, is, killing women's basketball as much as the ratings are fantastic and the game is growing you know what will kill it more than anything let this shit continue to be get political and the people that don't want to be around politics will say you know what ain't getting involved you know why i'm not getting involved because every time that we do this kind of shit happens yeah and and look that i'm willing to give jeff landry a, a a mulligan or whatever but i to do that to Kim, especially knowing what Kim has gone through these last a very emotional. Do you think that he knows what she's been through the last week? May, probably not, because if he would have been paying attention to women's basketball, he would have known that it was confirmed by every single member of Louisiana media that the, the team hasn't been out there for years now. You and, ever see a, a, a governor get that ratioed in less than an hour? I n- Honestly, no. And look, I know being a governor is a hard job, but if I was an elected official, I would have one of the 50,000 PR people approve every last thing I I, I tweet out. Every last period, every last comma. Right. Because 
like he literally got a lot of people and I have a lot of friends on the right. I have a lot of friends on the left that live in Louisiana. Everybody was furious at him. Now I'll tell you this people outside the state of Louisiana that are, are on his side liked it. And that's where, well, you know, well he, okay. Right? That someone who's been in that world for over a decade, let me just tell you something. You know what he's doing? Oh, he's, he's going for the big office. One of them. It's right. it's one of the most. Listen, it doesn't matter what the state of Louisiana thinks about him right now because he'll probably he just got elected in. They'll forget about this in four years during election time. Yeah. But yeah. What people will remember is his track record of standing up for the anthem. It's a cu calculated political tweet for him so that when he needs to get the right base up, he can say, "I said stand up for the anthem." And we're so dumb as people, we'll forget what the context was of him standing up for the anthem. Right. And I, I feel I, I I really, really, really do feel bad for Kim Mulkey. And it's 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 hard for I me. I do too. I've it's hard for me too because Kim has lived a really good life, a life that is is ten times better than almost everyone, yep. and, and and so on and so on. I really feel bad for what she's gone through these last couple of weeks. And what's really hilarious about that or ironic, not hilarious, ironic about it is, you know, yesterday she did not coach her best game. Uh, she, no, she got out coach. I mean, and we should yeah. be talking about the game. Right. Carter, she got out coach. I mean, having Haley Van Lith on uh, Caitlin Clark. Well, not, not only Carter, if Haley Van Lith was a thousand percent healthy, Okay, and she didn't have the flu. She wasn't getting IVs, whatever. All right. It would even be questionable if she was 100% healthy. But you're, and, and then Haley Van Lith gets dragged through the mud on social media because of all of this. While Carter, she's going through the flu. Yeah. Or whatever it is that she's going through. And by the way, I said this on your show last night. You know what's, you know what lost in the game? Haley Van Lith ain't lose shit. You can't shoot, be one of 16 from the field in the third quarter and expect to come back on a team like that. Right. That's, how you, that's why you lost. You, Carter, their inconsistency scoring the basketball finally caught up to them. I, I totally agree with you, Blake. And last year, LSU caught a ton of breaks to win the national championship. This year, from the start of the season to now, they just did not catch a whole lot of breaks. Like, the only – like – the only player on this team that you can legitimately say exceeded her expectations was Flaw J. No. Everyone, everyone, like we knew Mora was going to be unfreaking believably good. Anyone that watched her, DePaul would tell her that I, she. I thought she underachieved. If I'm being honest. Well, last night you you can make the case, but no, Mora Mora was was her. Mora was her all season long. I. I, I I mean, she was good. She wasn't who I thought she would be in crunch time. No, I, I, I disagree. I, I think, I think she, I think she was pretty elite. I mean, she was what just outside first team All SEC, and she played both ends of the floor. And by the way, probably played a higher volume of minutes than she. Oh, probably, no doubt. Than than she probably would have. Swiss Smith Army Knight. Going, Smith going down killed them, dude. Yeah, and and for me, uh. You know, LSU did not get – and so much is focused on Haley Van Lich just last night. They didn't get what they expected out of her for the entire season. And it's a real juxtaposition of how dominant she was at Louisville, where she was the number one player in the, in the transfer portal over Morrow. And, you know, it, it's still one of the most bizarre things how Haley Van Lith played this season. I understand it wasn't the best fit. I understand she's not a true distribution point guard. It, it's still very strange. Uh, and some of that might be the flu. Some of that might be all the minutes uh, she had to play. And that's what ultimately did this team in, Blake. The injuries, uh, not having the depth that they had last year. This team was so insanely deep last year uh, with Jasmine Carson and Poa being like later bench players uh, on their team. When you only have seven playable players and only four of them are really playing at near their highest or their highest level, it's hard to win a national championship. So I said this before the tournament, Blake, if this team made the Elite Eight and lost to Iowa, I can live with it. 
I, I, I can. The, the um, problem I had was that Van Lith, if I'm going to get on to her about one thing, when Kaylin Clark goes left, she's going to pull up and shoot. And you got to yeah. know that after the second three. Yes. And, and when she goes right, she's going to drive. I mean, Carter, I ain't trying to be rude to Haley Van Lith. It's not rocket science, buddy. You know, like, I, I mean, I hadn't watched Kaylin Clark all year. And, and I knew this going into the game because of what I saw her do last year. She's gonna come off a ball screen. She's gonna if she goes left, she's gonna take a little drop back and then shoot. It's her move. And then if she's going right, she's gonna try to get to the bucket or she's gonna dish. That's all. That's literally her entire game. And if you yeah. couldn't figure that out, and if Kim couldn't figure that out, and look, that loss more on anything too from a game plan standpoint was on Kim. And I don't think it's wrong for us to say that Kim just didn't have a good enough game plan there, right? Um, Carter, I, I, I came out and started the show and, and said, if you're a racist bigot, leave. So I, I don't really want to go down the road of uh, just like every time I feel like I talk about these stupid idiots, I give them a platform in doing it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, it, I, I mean, I mean, Blake, it's it's it, it was there. I mean, a, a ton of political commentators uh, could could tell you the same thing. I mean. It, it 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 did turn into one of those types of things and that's obviously a very uh sad thing in a sport that's supposed to you know unite uh, a lot of people some of the nasty memes and uh the the four letter t word getting thrown around uh that rhymes with hug uh when when it comes to well, describing it starts with a t and has hug in it yeah uh and and that word gets thrown around uh, that hurts. Uh, that really hurts uh, players. It doesn't matter if they're making millions of dollars in NIL or not. That's that. That really does hurt them. You know. Uh, you know what's funny about that too, Carter? Uh, at least uh, maybe it's not saying funny, but imagine a defensive coordinator saying that to the best defensive player two years ago. Oh wait. So you want to know a disconnection, but between Matt House and some of his players. There you go. Oh, I didn't know that. Look at you. Blake, no, no, I'm not, be, I'm, not jo- I'm not joking. I got that yeah. confirmed from player and got it confirmed from coaches, position well, coaches. That, well, I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad he's out then. Yeah, he's a horrible human being. Speaking of football, let, let's get to some of it. Uh, Carter, let me start with this. Joe Sloan spoke today. With the media, I thought he did. He was fantastic at the mic. Um, anything you took away from Joe Sloan and in, in his press conference today? Yeah, it's ironic that it's it, it. This was the same thing that happened last year, Blake, when Mike Dembrock gave a very illuminating press conference. It happened the same weekend of of the women's Final Four. That's right. So, so this year, Sloan's twenty plus minute press conference also flew under the radar. And once again, coordinators are not always made available to the media. The last regime did not do that and, uh, unless it was a rare circumstance. Yeah, so the as only LSU- time that O did it, if you remember, was during COVID. And they did, like, remember Blake Baker was on Zoom. Um, I think Durante Jones was on Zoom. But – it was like ten minutes, and they were out. It was get to know the go know the coaches or something like that. Right. But they never allowed them, you know. After that, right? So you get a full twenty plus minutes uh, to to ask Sloan uh, about a lot of different things. And he spoke about Chris Hilton. Uh, he spoke up for Mason Taylor, uh, and basically said what you you know expect to say. Now, Blake had a very busy day. I was only able to listen to the first like half of it, uh, but. Man, I'm really excited. You know, Joe handled the the part the portions I heard pretty well. I liked what he said about his relationship with Cortez Hankton. And I'm really excited what he's going to do uh, with this offense. And one thing I really liked what he said is offenses at this level and all levels should be built from the inside out. And he was talking about, most importantly, DJ Chester, who's going to Which, be. Which, if there's any comment that he could have had that I was I wanted to hear, it was that. And he knows wow. that. Yeah. And and that's so key, right? Mm-hmm. That's the one player who unquestionably touches a ball every single time. And he's wearing that number 79 jersey that Lloyd Cushenberry wore. So national title galore. Here we come. So yeah, I mean, he's he's the key, 
right? He, he's got to get that ball on the money every single time. And one thing I really do like about him going into next year is he's got SEC experience, right? Going on the road, stepping in as a third team center. No doubt that he, he probably had very small thoughts in his head going into that Missouri game on the road that he was even going to have to play that day. And he stepped up and played admirably. And um, now this is his chance to, to, to run this unit that returns the other four starters. So the fact that Sloan said that they built from the inside out is, is absolutely crucial. He talked about the development of Garrett Nussmeyer and Carter. I said this and we've talked about this, me and you probably, and we talked about it the most when Wisconsin during the Wisconsin or after the Wisconsin game, excuse me, was, you know what the best about that game? The best thing that I liked about Garrett Nussmeyer wasn't the long pass that he threw to Chris Hilton on that 99 yard drive. Cause you knew that he could do that. Right. I think Joe Sloan said the biggest thing today about his quarterback is, he, and I'm paraphrasing, when he said Garrett Nussmeyer has to understand when to take the check down and when to throw the bomb. And I think that it's for him to say that tells me that that is a constant conversation that him and Garrett are having on a daily basis. Yeah, it's the inverse of what they were telling Jaden last year. Throw that sucker deep. Throw it more often deep. Right. Uh, and and now it's it's the opposite. And Blake, this is this is what teams are going to do to LSU next year. They, they they're going to play a lot of too high. They're going to give you light boxes. So they're not going to let Chris Hilton and Kyron Lacey and Garrett Nussmeyer do what he do, does best and hit deep shots. You're going to have to throw over the middle, take what the defense gives you, you the and ball. and you got to be able to run the football. More importantly, if you have a bunch of light boxes, and that's something else that Sloan uh, talked about today. So. Garrett, you know, in his press conference uh, a few weeks ago, talked about running when he has opportunities. If teams play a lot more too high in quarters coverage, that does open up more space to to scramble if if pass rushers want to get aggressive in a four man rush, and I, that's going to have to be a little portion of his game. And one thing, Blake, that's happened to me personally, I don't know if it's happened to you, but I, I've started on my SEC channel watching. Uh, all the other quarterbacks in the SEC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I watch it very critically. There are a lot of guys that are on LSU schedule whose quarterbacks have grown on me. And that doesn't concern me because I think Garrett Nutsmeyer is going to be really good. But it does concern me defensively. I'll tell you this, Blake. I am very high on Connor Wigman. This w t Today was actually the first time I really sat down and 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 watched him. And he is a very, very good quarterback. And we got to go to their building. I like Colin Klein as their play caller. I do too. Uh, I, I think he's going to make their offense a lot easier. I think they're going to um, be able to generate more explosive plays, even with Evan Stewart out the door. So I, I the SEC quarterbacks, at first glance, I was like, okay, the, the, a lot of unproven guys. I think Garrett clears all of them pretty easily. Uh, or most of them pretty clear, uh, easily. But now a lot of these guys ha have grown on me. So we might have a bunch of high-scoring games uh, next year yet again uh, uh, for LSU. The question becomes, can you just make those critical stops when you need to? And if you do that, yeah. you'll, be, you, you know, you'll be fine. Uh, Carter Bryant joining us. Uh, another thing that Joe Sloan brought up. So, Carter, it's one thing when players or coaches talk about players, right? Like in the past, you had – coaches who would say like oh, oh would say this all the time oh he's looking great in camp he's looking great this guy's doing great this spring and it never panned out that way a lot of times oh yeah what's interesting to me is carter we've seen kyron lacy or uh, with our own eyeballs and carter you have your offensive coordinator saying listen man uh, he he made a massive leap last year guys he's making another one this one Carter, we talked about this on your show last night, but I want to re rehash it because of what Joe Sloan said today. Are, are we just not talking about Kyron Lacey enough? Yeah, Blake, I it, it's it sort of dawned on me that there is a higher likelihood than we would like to think that he is the first player off the draft board next year uh, for, for before, LSU. Before Perkins? Yeah, because because Perkins is a defensive player. I mean, it's defensive play. I mean, 
defensive players have become a little bit devalued, especially an off-ball linebacker. Uh, I, I, I would not shock me if, if, if Kyron Lacey over, and I don't think he's a better NFL draft prospect than Will Campbell or Emory Jones at this. At, I, I would say one of those two guys would be the first off the board, but Kyron has that. And that, you know, Blake, I follow a lot of, of draft analysts. I also follow a lot of analysts in the dynasty fantasy community. Now this will be the most radical thing I'll say on your show is those guys know ball. I mean, these guys are in these thousand dollar leagues, spend tens of thousands of dollars playing these fantasy leagues. And there are guys that, that just watch film. They get all 22 copy and, and they're, they're, they're already planning out the draft for next year. A lot of their prep for this year is already done. They're already planning out for next year. Cause you know, you're trading picks for the future. We're in a dynasty league together. Right. Mm-hmm. And Which I have been there in, Three months, four months. Right. Yeah. I, and and my favorite dynasty analyst, who is sharp as you know what, has Kyron Lacey as a bona fide first round pick going into next year. He is that high on him. And this guy is extremely sharp. And once again, this is someone neutral. You know, I don't even know where he lives. I know he's not an LSU fan, though. And he he just he just loves Kyron. So Kyron might be a little underrated and he could be one of these 60, 70, 80 reception guys next year. I'm going to combat you. If it's not Harold Perkins, I could see Will Campbell going ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, right now I would say it's, it's Will Campbell and, and, or Emory Jones, either one of those two uh, would, would, would go before Kyron Lacey. But at this point, I think Kyron is a day two pick with some day one upside. Uh, I was going to ask you this, but since uh, Anthony B. Saints, this is my last question about this to you. He says, ask Blake and Carter, what are y'all thoughts on Cortez and Sloan trying to air the ball out by slowing the tempo to help out the struggling defense? It's something that you and I have had conversations about, Carter. See, here, here's, here's the theory that I have. If you go back and look at where LSU was snapping the ball on the clock last year, Carter, they were just to the line. They, I mean, they would go fast, but the explosive plays made it seem like they were going a lot faster than they actually were. Uh, do you think they slow some things down with a new quarterback? Maybe go a little bit more twenty-two on 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 how they do things. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, look, I, I'd have to go look. Uh, I was trying to Google this right now. I did, it, this finally clicked, and it's a really good question, Anthony B. Saints. I wanted to look up to see what Missouri's like defensive pace of play stats were. Um, I, I I don't I don't remember Missouri being like they a weren't super fast. they weren't fast they they okay. were a lot like us they get to the line and get to play in make an audible or two I mean very similar the difference was they just well I mean they did they had explosive plays but remember that Tennessee game yeah yeah remember yeah. when they choked out Tennessee like they just kept running the ball and uh, who was their yeah. running back guy uh, uh, Schrader. Oh. Cody Schrader. Cody right? Schrader just lit that ass up, smack at that ass. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, they choked him out. That's, I mean, to Eli Drinkwitz's credit, man, he would choke you out if you let him. Yeah, I and that might be key for Blake Baker, right? Because, you know, if you're a defensive play caller and you're used to having an offense that's able to run the football, it makes your job a lot easier, Right. Um, as a play caller defensively, if you don't have to call as many plays. And mm-hmm. you made this point, obviously, and as did Anthony B. Saints, you would score so quickly sometimes that a defense that was already struggling wouldn't be able uh, to make the adjustments. So, Carter, we gave them no chance last year. Even though they didn't have a chance, we gave them no chance. And, and the problem with an offense like that, it's a lot of what you ran into in, 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 in 19. And, and, Carter, they did slow. If you remember – Georgia, if you remember Oklahoma, if you remember even Clemson, remember how much in the early part of that game they slowed things down and they threw the ball all over the place, but it was slower. Joe was hitting moderate, you know, completions, and then he'd take the deep shot. I, I just think, Carter, that you got – this is my philosophy. If you give your defense that's not that great zero chance, what do you expect? You're not even game planning – to try to give them the shot. So, for example, in the second half 
Okay, you you slow things down to try to eat the clock that you were unable to do. Uh, Ryan Yates makes the play on fourth down for you to get the ball back, right? Then you go for it on fourth. You should have punted. You didn't. You just get when you did give them chances, they did succeed. Now, I mean, you got to give them that they did make actually did make some stops. Minuscule, but I do agree. I mean, they 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 would occasionally do, but honestly, to, to Anthony B. Saints question the biggest thing that you are going to need right there, there are some incomers that i think are newcomers that will move the needle immediately deshaun mcbride deshaun mcbride obviously but what did you you're just crossing your fingers that a lot of the four-star pedigree guys that are going into year four of their career takes a leap of some sort guys that just did not play well, make some type of leap. And one of those guys that's getting gassed up right now is Sage Ryan, right? With the with the pick six and the interceptions in practice, great. Will this actually transition to an actual football field, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, BT, who's a supporter of yours, he's a supporter of mine, uh, Brian Turner uh, pointed this out. USC's got really good receivers week one. Yeah, yeah. That uh, Zachariah Branch is a special football player. So th- they're gonna they're gonna get tested obviously immediately. So like I'm I'm really ex- I'm really excited about Blake Baker. I think he is going to be really good. I do think he is a special defensive play caller. I think this defensive staff is a very special group. I'm not just saying that to gas this up to all the LSU fans watching this. I, I since day one, I, I wasn't really high on the last regime. I love this regime. I love what Brian Kelly did, and hopefully, a lot of the guys that are in there this spring takes that next leap. I don't, Carter. I, I'm so nervous. About, I, look, I'm not going to bring hash this up again, but I'm so nervous about that interior defensive line. I mean, yeah, you should be. I mean, look, I, they, I listen to me. Listen, listen to you, buddy. I'm going to give you a hot take that, and nobody's going to agree with me, but when it happens, I'm going to come on the show and say, I told you so. Um, USC offensively will have more success as not just offense, I think team wise, because Miller Moss runs their system better than Caleb Williams does. I could see it. I could see it. And Caleb is too improvised. Carter, that does not work in that system. I played it for three years. That air raid system, Carter, I promise you, regardless of how how much they run the football, when you have those principles and you don't go to your read, it will not succeed. And that is I, – I look, Caleb Williams is the biggest – how do I want to say this? It's the biggest fallacy that I think that I can remember. Let me explain. Carter, we look at him because we don't watch a lot of Pac-12 football and say, oh, man, he I mean, he, we saw the highlights. He had 40 touchdowns. He made great plays. Okay, that's cool. But when he did not run that system, like against Notre Dame, and he tried to do it himself, Carter, it was, it was the, the worst game that I've seen arguably from a number one overall pick at quarterback in the last decade. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of discussion about that that Notre Dame game, but you know, as far as Miller Moss is concerned, I do I do agree. Uh, you, you look at Baker Mayfield and a lot of those guys; they more so played within the structure of of Lincoln's offense, right? And look how ba- look what Baker's doing now when he plays into a structure. You can have talent and play into a structure. Yeah, and I w- one if I were a USC fan, okay. Once again, I'm not the big insider or whatever. I don't the Lincoln Riley thing just kind of feels weird to me. Like I don't he doesn't I've, fit I've, he doesn't fit them. I've heard things about him not being a first one in, last one out kind of guy. That concerns me. It 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 just does. Um well and don't don't say if it concerns you about Lincoln, you know, there's people trying to make those rumors about BK too now. Well, they they don't make sense though, because LSU's recruiting right at an extremely high level for so so that 
USC's not like at the same level that that That's LSU is. Very true. True. Well, they so, did they did get four big time commits defensively. Well, yeah, they did they did flip someone, so I might be wrong on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did go to the state of Georgia, and like Georgia fans were like, "Oh, shizite!" So, so if Lincoln Riley's watching this, uh, I, I apologize. No, he's cooking brisket, smoking I, some brisket. I, I, well, I, I wasn't familiar with your game, Lincoln. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, 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 ha, I have heard that, and I th- that that does concern me. It also concerns me that it took him this long to finally move on from Alex Grinch, but now they have UCLA's defensive coordinator over now and and we'll we'll, we'll see uh what actually transpires uh in that game but you know for me Blake defensively I do agree to your initial point the defensive tackle position is has got to get better hopefully uh Gio Giovanni your your Italian brother at least I think he's Italian if your name is Giovanni I think he might be Spanish Spanish Pius. ain't no listen, they ain't a lot of Italians with a Z in their name, Bucko. I'm just telling <laughs> you. Uh so so yeah, I'm sorry. Uh yeah, I think he might I think that might be Spaniard, my guy. It, it might it might be. Which by the I, way, we're not far from Spain, you know? I, I mean true. Uh a I lot of know. Italians are technically so here's the thing, the ancestry.com thing, man. I got some Spaniard in my blood. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, Giovanni, I'm I'm sorry. I, I, I support Spain and Italy's national team, so sorry about that. But you know, I, G, Gio grew on me as as uh, a snap eater, a playable guy, uh, a guy. You know, I actually listened to a full Carter, interview. He's going to start now, though. Yeah, I mean, well, if he came in right now with this D line, he starts. So I'll t- I'll tell you this, Blake. I listened to a full interview he did when when he was with the Badgers. And he's a very smart guy. He understands scheme. He was like he did a whole like answer on switching from Wisconsin's old scheme to what Fickle was doing and having him play straight head up nose. And he was talking about how he prefers to play in a, a four man front, which is what LSU will do. But he also can give you some three man front uh, capabilities. And he, he he played hard. Right. Is 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 he the next Ricky Jean Francois? Probably not, but he'll Ricky Jean in the house. Ricky Jean, baby, the field goal block master. Bro, uh, what a name for a Louisiana defensive tackle. He is the time. number one best defensive tackle name of all time for Louisiana. Ricky Jean. Ricky man. Jean Francois. No one can block a kick. Hey, can I, I hey, can Jean. I tell you something? I yeah. Ricky Jean. So listen to this. Uh, I don't think Brandon would mind me saying this. So when LSU played in Atlanta, uh, maybe against Georgia Tech or Clemson, I forget, and the Peach Bowl, I think it might have been Georgia Tech, in 2008, 2009, whenever they played in the Peach Bowl, uh, Richard Dixon was still on that team, I believe. So it might have been 2008. I was at an event in Atlanta and stayed in the same hotel as them, okay, Okay. as LSU. Um, Ricky Jean Francois shows up to the hotel. Okay. And a guy that I, um, is, I'm a friend with, I, who's from the Atlanta area tells me, cause somebody called his name. He goes, who is a Ricky Jean Francesi? And I'm like, Oh my God, the obliteration of this man's name. It's the most Louisiana thing I've ever heard in my life. Franchisee. Franchisee. Uh, Franchisee. That's that's good. And I love I love I I'm I love that he stayed in the NFL as long as he did. And he was a good NFL player. Played for longer than I thought that he would. Played yeah, more I'm, than my favorite player in 03, which was Chad Lavalle. Ricky G won 03, though. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, play oh, okay. the guy who played in 03, who I was, who was probably my favorite player, was uh, was uh, um, Chad Lavalle. Yeah, Chad. Actually, Chad's my favorite defensive tackle too. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm more I'm than, a, more than Glenn Dor- uh, Glenn more than Glenn for me. Yeah, me too. Because I, when I when I was a young DT, I, I was in Baton Rouge. I ran into him oh, in the mall, sorry. and I freaked out. Like I was like, Mom, it's Chad Lavalle, and he stopped and talked to us like 15 minutes. I wish camera phones were around then because I would have taken a photo. Biggest hands 
on a human being you will ever see in your life. Dude had to have, I mean, they look like frying pans. You look like the big show's hands. And that was another case, along with Mo Claiborne, as the biggest shocks I've ever seen not succeeding in the NFL. Like, I, I was, I mean, Chad Lavale was that mother effer uh, in, in college. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm st- like, if you would have told me Kyle Williams w- would have lapped him in his NFL career, I would, I would have, and Kyle Williams was great at LSU. I would have, I would have been shocked. Uh, but it goes to show you how tough it is to transition to the NFL. It could be the best college player you could be. It's it's so hard to be dominant at that next level. Tim Debo says hi. All right, anything else we need to get to? Did I miss something? Did I miss any LSU related content that we that we missed on? Angel Reese, if you're watching this, let's run it back. Run it back. All right. I, I here's run my it, dream. Run it back. I understand. I think everybody's saying to run it back because of she'll just be a bigger star in college than she will be in the NBA and make more money. Here's the problem I have with that, especially for women, is Carter, as someone who was married with two kids, women do think about their biological clock more than men ever will. So I do think that there's something to be said about her needing to go because and look just because she's a woman and i understand that and I, i'm not trying to be sexist at all no 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 but i i do think that that factor is a major factor in playing here and i think that she's got other things that she wants to do uh as well yeah it, it, i've interviewed female athletes uh about th- this very thing. One golfer actually brought it up to me in an interview I did with her a long time ago. And I never really thought about that. Um, and that's, it's one thing you got to think about, uh, as you know, when you compare female and male athletes. So that, that is interesting. I, I just think she needs to run it back because I, I am not sure if she is as WNBA ready as some of the other elite prospects. I, I, I agree with that in, in the draft and I find a mid range. Yeah. And if, and, and if if she can knock that down consistently, she'll be a very good WNBA player. And I think that's going to be key. You know, you see the NBA has become more spread out. You, you're, you're just not going to be able to just out-rebound everybody on the block with putbacks at a higher level. Uh, so I want Angel to come back because I do think it's best for her. But also, I, I don't want this train – I just – I don't want this train to stop. I, I want to keep it going. Yeah, we'll see, and I think, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see how that goes. Carter, the power, Brian. Uh, men's basketball, anything that you're excited about with Matt McMahon? No, it, it, did something happen? No, there's something. I mean, they got to recruit. They got to commit in the portal. Bronny James is in the portal, by the way. Let, let's go. Let's let's go. You know, I mean, talk about scared. talk about having media around you. My goodness. All right. See you next Monday, my guy. All right, buddy. Cheers. That is Carter, the Power Bryant, who joins us every single um, Monday, but today's Tuesday. What, Ben? <laughs> Let me get to a quick break. We wrap it up next. Stay with us. Guys, you might know my good friend Carol Falls and all the great service that he provides over at State Farm. He is your good neighbor after all. But did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates as well? Along with a great neighbor service, State Farm agent Carol Falls has surprisingly great rates for everyone inside the state of Louisiana. So call him today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300 for all of those surprisingly great rates on auto, home, and life insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there and individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to the State Farm underwriting requirements by the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Whether you've been injured in an accident, you're preparing for a future with your estate planning, you're getting ready to close in on a real estate deal, or you're about to welcome a new addition through adoption into your family, or you're facing criminal charges, you need very experienced attorneys, and that is what the Drake Williams Law Firm will be able to do for you in navigating the legal system. 
The door to their cozy office in historic downtown Ponchatoula has been open since 1981. They have helped thousands and thousands of Louisiana families and individuals win cases, close on real estate deals, and regain that peace of mind. Their lawyers over at the Drake Williams Law Firm, Ernie Drake III, Ryan J. Williams, and Summer Vignair are very determined, compassionate, and dedicated to their craft. It's the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Give them a call today at 985-386-7600. Tell them your good friend Blake Rafino at AYS sent you on by. J&J has protected Louisiana homes and businesses for over 60 years. We call them today, make the pets go away. J&J exterminating. Yeah. Uh, well, you want to be a big man and talk on the camera. Come on. Oh. You got to say hello. How are you doing? Hello. How are you doing? All right. Now, listen. Uh, you've started T-ball. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Yes. All right. Are you absolutely smashing the baseball right now? Yeah. Uh, how many home runs did you hit today? Um, 24. 24 home runs. Um. Are you? Do you think that you could be potentially one of the best baseball players to ever have the last name Rafino in this lifetime? Yeah. Um, who is your favorite baseball player? Um, uh, hit the T. Hit the Tommy. Hit the Tommy. Is that your favorite baseball player? Mm-hmm. Why is he your favorite pace, baseball player? Because I like to hit him because I want to hit it on the tee ball. And I want to hit a home run and a double hit. You want to hit a double in home runs like him? Yeah. Okay. All right. Can Daddy finish your show now? Yeah. Go play. I don't. Uh, what is that? It's a bat. No. Bring it. Bring it to me. This is a fine Marucci bat. You see it's got daddy's name on it? Yeah. You like that, buddy? Oh, daddy, that says my name, too. Yeah, it says Rafina. Go put it back. All right. (laughs) Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks. You say you're welcome. Welcome. All right, run, go, bye. I got to go. I completely forgot about what we're going to talk about. We are an hour and 20 minutes into the show, but glad that Ben, he acts, he's not lying, dude. Kid can absolutely rake at the plate. Dude's, dude's a menace. I mean, he, lit, like, T ball's not for him. I'm, look, I would not, that's the only thing that I know people brag about their kids all the time. The kid can absolutely hit it. All right. Um, to wrap it up, I guess I'll just do this. Let me see if I can find this. I think we've had a very productive show. A uh, panic button for LSU baseball. I would not. I would not hit the panic button. Not yet. Let's see what happens this weekend versus Vandy. We'll see y'all guys tomorrow. Y'all have a good one. Peace.